we are looking at the issue of international factor mobility and as a first step we are examining issues relating to international labor migration in the previous video i gave some stats about the extent of migration in the world or what is the percent of foreign born as compared to total population and what we found is for the world it is about 3% of the world population lives in a country other than where they were born and then we also found differences in the extent of labor migration for example in the case of china labor migration of foreign bonds is very small and in case of countries like singapore qatar and so on it is very high and us and european countries fall in between then we also looked at the migration to the us the different waves of migration over time and also where are we finding most of the migrants and we did distinguish between what is called called migration of skilled workers versus unskilled or low skilled workers and we also distinguish between what is legal and illegal migration in the previous video i examine the reasons as to why people migrate from one country to the other and what you should remember is the following why do countries like the us and european countries or even countries in the middle east let foreign born come to their countries there are two reasons for this one of them could be say humanitarian grounds and for example in the recent times we are seeing a large number of refugees coming to us and european countries from war torn countries like syria or countries in africa and another reason as to why we permit migration in these countries is because of shortage of skilled manpower and that's why we see a very significant percent of skilled workers moving to us and european countries and the purpose of this once again is to fill the gap between between what what is available and what is needed now let us examine the consequences of international labor migration on the source country as well as on the host country now when people when workers leave what happens in the source country is there'll be a loss of output why because the number of workers present in that country has reduced and when there is loss of output there is also a loss in income as well so on the source country when workers fully able workers migrate whether they are low skill unskilled or skilled workers there is bound to be a loss of output or income suffered by the source country and when these workers come to the host country they contribute to the economy and so there is a gain of output income and so on on the host country because of worker immigration <clears throat> another thing we should note is the following and that is in the source country as more and more workers leave relatively speaking there will be some kind of a shortage of workers in the source country or the workers will become somewhat scarce in relation to capital and thus when workers are becoming more scarce in relation to workers in the source country what we are likely to find is distribution of income moves away from owners of capital to workers why because if you have a shortage of workers in a country the salaries will increase and so in terms of distribution of income we see a shift of income from businesses or owners of capital to workers in the source country what happens in the host country 
it is exactly the opposite of what happens in the source country now as more and more people come to the us or countries like that what is happening is there's going to be an increase in supply of workers and when there's an increase in supply of workers it has a depressing effect on wages and in fact an economist by the name of borhas who teaches at harvard he has estimated that a 10% increase in migration of unskilled or low skilled workers depresses wages in the us by 3 to 4% and hence <clears throat> what happens is in the case of host country because of worker migration the distribution of income will change from workers on which it has a depressing effect to businesses so in countries like us and countries european countries what we find is businesses are pushing for more and more migration and of course the workers hate it simply because it has a depressing effect on their wages so this is an important consequence of migration on source as well as host country the third point is also equally important and let us look at this from the host country first and as people live in the host country these foreign born workers they still have family in the source country and since their earnings are likely to be higher in the host country relative to the source country chances are they will send money back home and these are called remittances so from the host country a certain amount of money will be flowing to the source country and and this is just to take care of the family that has been left behind in the source country and according to one estimate these remittances are so important that these remittances are twice as much as foreign aid given by different countries to developing countries so remittances are more important than foreign aid from the perspective of developing countries again a very important point look at the taxable income or tax income or the tax revenue that flows to the governments in the host country and even these migrants come to the host country start working there their income they start earning income and they start contributing to the tax revenue of the government and so this helps the government with respect to its different needs of spending money on different things like defense infrastructure development welfare payments and so on and then there is also an outflow that is if these migrants are welfare dependent or they depend on handouts in the host country in such a case the welfare payments increase so d has a positive impact on the budget of the host country and e has an adverse effect on the budget of the host country and what we have found in the case of us is the following the con- because us has relatively more skilled workers migrate to the us relative to unskilled workers what we find is relatively speaking the tax revenue earned by the government by the uh, from the migrants is much higher than the welfare payments given to the migrants from the government budget so these are some of the consequences of migration on the source as well as host let us look at another term which is talked about a lot in international labor migration and this is called brain drain and what this means is the following it's the migration of highly educated and skilled people from developing nations to industrial industrialized nations for example <clears throat> look at the migration of people from india to the us or it could be other countries <clears throat> now and look at the case of say 
medical doctors. Now, a country like India subsidizes medical education, so people are trained in medical field. And when they are ready and fully mature to contribute to the Indian economy, they migrate to countries like the U.S. So in a way, India has lost all the money that it has paid for training of these medical doctors. And U.S. receives fully trained doctors from India. And so this loss of skilled workers from India's perspective is called brain drain. So this is a term you should know. International labor migration is a very interesting field. And one of the economists that I refer to is called Borjas. And he looked at the cost to the migrant in terms of migrating. Mm -hmm. The first cost is the obvious one, the cost of travel. Nowadays, it is not as much, but say 100 or 200 years back, you would have to put your entire life savings to travel from one country to another. Another cost to the migrant is called the emotional cost. When someone migrates, what they have done is they have probably left some family behind and they have moved on to an unknown or a strange or a new culture. And so this has on its own tremendous emotional cost on the migrant. In fact, these days it is much better in the sense if you migrate from one country to another, travel has become so much easier and cheaper that you could always go back and visit your home country. 100 or 200 years back, when people left their villages, they never went back to the same village. So this would definitely entail a certain amount of emotional cost. Now, when these migrants come to the host country, they do face some kind of discrimination. And Borjas has done quite a bit of research on that. So for the first generation migrant, what we find is because of various reasons. It could be discrimination. It could be because this person does not really understand the cultural nuances of the host countries. What we find is these migrant workers are usually paid wages which are lower than their contribution. So as compared to a native born, they are likely to receive lower wages and it is lower than what they are contributing in terms of output. This happens for the first generation. And what I has found is really interesting. So what happens to the second generation? They see their parents face discrimination, insecurity, and all that. And so they work very hard. And since they have grown up in the host country, they are very comfort comfortable with the local culture. And by second generation, what we find is wages start to match uh, productivity. So there's no difference in wages between a native, uh, they are the native born, or the second generation uh, of migrants. From third generation or fourth generation, the difference is completely wiped out. So this completes our discussion of international labor migration. Thank you for your time.